uh, don't over plan. Uh, I over plan massively. What does over planning mean? Uh, trying to plan every single stop before you have it and trying to plan out what pace you're going to do and just trying to figure out, I'm just a really type A type of person who likes to do all these things, but from what I realized, it's a lot more enjoyable and a lot more feasible to kind of plan along the way. And as a kind of a control freak, not I'm gonna say I'm a control freak, but a type A person who studied medicine where you have to have a very defined plan to get into medical school in a very realistic like, schedule. If you don't follow that, you're not gonna get accepted. So it's going from those two worlds is like, you know, completely different. So by being more flexible, it actually um, makes you makes uh, you have make better decisions. I feel like because if you try to plan it beforehand, you're gonna have way too much food at certain stops and way too little food at other stops. That's what's happened to me. Just today, I had almost two weeks of food because I was hiking a lot faster than I thought I was in the section, and people back home were sending me food. So over planning is a bad thing, and go as light as possible from the very beginning. Oh, you're a little too heavy. I was way too heavy in the beginning. I started out with 48 pounds so for day one with eight liters. Um, I don't think I would ever carry over six liters ever for any reason from now on because there's diminishing returns. Um, the more liters of water you carry, the slower you're gonna hike and the slower you're gonna get to that water cache or that water source. So just being smart with your water, even over a 40 mile carry with five or six liters is in my mind far superior than eight liters because you're just gonna you're more than likely to get hurt and i've seen the most people who are within their means of their pack weight in terms of like not everyone needs to be ultra light but you know if someone's a really small person you know they or has knee issues or something like that they could benefit from going ultra light so ultra light's different you know it's like there's d defined classifications but to me like going everyone should at least be lightweight yeah, and um, I think people try to rush the mileage game too early. I think it's really important to really, honestly, if 20 is like the max, the first two weeks I think you should ever do, and more like 15 to 17 to get your trail lines underneath you, because those people who are going to be doing 20s, 5s, and everything, they're going to get injured or take zeros, and you're going to catch up to them anyways. And you need to... Uh, it's you know you're in the elements this is not the at or your park at home if you get stuck in a bad situation in some of these places you know it could be lethal you could have to get evac'd out there's probably been seven or eight people at least this year that would have had to get evac'd out for various reasons and by pushing too many miles hard too early you're gonna get in deep trouble it's an ego game yeah it's an ego game yourself. Because, you know, I was like a collegiate athlete and thought I could go out here and hike with anyone and have the endurance that I should be able to do it. And then it kind of humbles you on day one when you meet a 55-year-old man who's just kicking your butt, you know, and he can hike way faster than you. I tried to hike with... Oh, is that the dude? Yeah, Wyoming. Yeah. Who, but he had 14,000 trail miles, you know. I had 20. So it's just um, hiking's a lot different than any other uh, thing I've done, you know. It's one of those things that... You can make it competitive, but it's not competitive in its nature in itself. And the competition is really between yourself, unless you're going for like a speed record or something like that, which I mean, only a handful of people would even attempt that, so. Save more money. I'm a town whore. <laughs> Love towns. I like jacuzzis and beer and good food. Costs a lot. I would probably say don't sweat the small stuff um uh yeah a lot of the um a lot of the micro planning can take place on the trail as you discover what works and what doesn't work for yourself um what falls into micro planning and small stuff so like the like your meals every day um planning planning meals out um uh, you know, I've seen and heard stories of people planning out every one of their meals for the five months, and uh, and those people are great because you get to the hiker box and you can uh, you can mooch off what they have decided that they no longer like, <laughs> and you can put those into your own bag. Um, 
but you know things change and as as your body adapts and changes you become more hungry or less hungry and you might want to carry more food or less food and um so yeah don't sweat the small stuff and uh and uh and just get out here and 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 do it i would give myself advice but i wouldn't you can't understand what it means until you're on the trail and it's the you do you mentality, the hike your own hike mentality is definitely the most important thing to keep. Keep on mentally and physically, keeping up with other people when you may not be at that rate or slowing down for other people because they're slower will eventually just kind of drain you Physically, you can hurt yourself trying to keep up, or mentally, you'll get drained trying to slow down when you want to hike and explore a little bit more. And when remembering that you don't need to feel attached to any single person on the trail, and that everyone's kind of learning the same hike your own hike mentality at the same time, too. So, like, first few weeks, if you're hiking with a group and then you ditch out on them because you realize that that's what you need to do to have fun and get everything you want. The other person may or may not feel put out or let down because you ditched them. But that's part of the trail and they're going to figure out that you didn't do it because you don't like them or you're being mean, but you're just kind of doing what's best for you. And to keep that in the forefront of what do I want to do right now, what's going to make me the happiest and the most rewarding thing I can do each day, and then do that exact thing while being respectful to everyone else around you seems to me the most important thing to keep in the forefront. I would say um, I spent so much time stressing about what gear to get and um, you know, and mo it was mostly stressed stressing about gear purchases you know like I was having stress dreams where my teeth were falling out about buying a tent you know and that's just silly like but um, and why do you think it's silly? now that you've come this far? Because it's just a tent, it's just a piece of gear that you're carrying, like, uh, you can change, you know, everything is um, constantly changing in your pack, or at least mine, like, there's always some new way that I'm trying to pack it, or, you know, like, trying to carry something and not carry something else, except for this bear can, because I'm really attached to it. Um, but I would say to, to not, like, worry about it so much. You know, I was like, so stressed about it. And like the best way to learn is to just go and do it, you know? Like, like every, everyone gets stressed. Yeah, of course everyone gets stressed, but like stress dreams about tents, it's silly. Spend less money in the very beginning resupplies. <laughs> uh, try to plan out like a little bit better of a budget. Like I struggled with that a little bit. What was difficult about the budgeting? Um, Just like not knowing like what, like kind of like what my body needed. Um, and also like trying to figure out like how much money that I want to spend in a town for fun versus like, do, do I want to save that for the next town or like those type of things, like planning that out a little bit better, I guess.